Today I want to get right into the teaching. God is gentle. God is gentle. I want to deal with that this morning. 2 Samuel 22, 36 states the following. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your gentleness has made me great. Your gentleness has made me great. I want you to see something here. This is very important. God is gentle with us. You might not think so. You might think, geez, God is harsh on us. And look what the Bible says and all of this. I want to tell you right now, God is gently leading us into our destiny and into our pur purpose. God has not come with a whip. God has not said, you better be here or else. I want to show you, even in Galatians, where it speaks about the leaders that have fallen, it says, gently restore those that have fallen or, or made, done something wrong. So I want you to see something. God is a gentle God. He is gentle with us. He loves us so much that he's letting his love draw us closer to him. He's letting us, letting us get drawn to him so that as we draw closer to his spirit, draw closer to his love, we actually start changing. And so God is actually not harsh with us at all. Okay, where God has given us instruction or he's given us um, things to do, he's done that for one specific reason, and that is for our protection. He's done that so that we are protected. All right, he knows what that consequence is going to hold for us if we just go and do our own thing. And so I want us to understand that as God is gentle with us, he's giving us the time to work through the process. And also, he doesn't expect us to change everything at once. He gently comes and leads us or directs us on a point. And when that point is actually starting to come in place, he leads us onto another point and another issue and another issue. I've been serving God since I was eight years old. And let me tell you something. I've never had it that I felt pressurized by God to change something. Never. What I have had is pressure from Christians. Christians like to fix you. Christians like to get you where they want you to go. But it's not God. It is man. I want to just make a statement today. And I want every one of us to be aware of this. Do not make your conviction somebody else's. This is very important. Do not make your conviction somebody else's. Let me give you an example. All right. When I was at school, I used to really enjoy watching lots of TV. And what I would do is I would watch TV. And those days we had uh, um, still the old VCRs. Okay, we could record. So I would watch the one channel one day and record it, you know, the other channels that I missed the movies or whatever. Get home from school and watch. You know, and I was watching a lot of TV. And God spoke to me about this. And God started to deal with me around this. But I could not make my conviction of watching TV somebody else's because God did not convict them. And maybe they weren't even watching as much. So I can't go to somebody and say, look, you're not allowed to watch any TV. Because that was something that God was dealing with me about. And so saints, I want us to be very careful of this because we do this so often. And that is when God deals with you with an issue does not mean that he's dealing with that same issue in somebody else's life. Remember this, God is gentle and God is gently going to work on them as he's gently going to work on me. And so God deals with something in my life. And as I deal with it, I need to get the victory. I overcome this area. You see, you don't know what areas I need to deal with. God does, but you don't know. Let's say I've got 10 areas that I need to deal with. God could be really working on area number two. You come and highlight area number eight. Now, all of a sudden, it's pressure. I'm dealing with what God has called me to do. And now I've got this pressure from you to change something else that I'm not ready yet. So let's allow God to work in the process. Remember this. Jesus Christ says, I will build my church. And so as we as believers start this process... Let us realize that God is gentle. But listen to the promise. Listen carefully. God's gentleness has made me great. 
What does that mean? Because God's been gentle, I have changed. I have grown and I've actually got to the stage where I'm in greatness. That does not happen in two minutes. And so saints, I want us to do two things today. Number one, I want you to look at your life where people have been putting pressure on your life. I want you to reject that in Jesus' name. I want you to reject where people have put pressure on you to change or to conform or to do something. I want you to reject that. And number two, I want us to focus on God leading me. Let's focus on God changing me at his pace. You see, the Bible says that if you're a Christian, you're going to be led of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is going to lead me into correction. The Spirit of God says that His Word's going to do it. There's many times that I'll be sitting in church and the preacher will preach something and I'll go, Yo, that is for me. I need to deal with that thing. Nobody knows about it. But God is dealing with me. And so let's get into that process. Let's get into that habit. And so today as we come, and we come around the table. I want us to celebrate the fact that God is gentle. Let us celebrate the fact that God loves us and he's not finished. And that Jesus Christ is building his church. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he said that this is my body that was broken for you. He took the cup and he said that this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for your emotional and physical healing in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus was shed for your salvation, protection, and provision. And so saints, as we come around the table today, let us celebrate what Jesus Christ has done and that God is gentle on us. God gently wants to bring us into the place that he has for us. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you that you love us so much. Lord, we ask you please to forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, attitude, motive, intention. Lord, we ask you please to forgive us and to wash us white as snow. Lord, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus to, Lord, help us to resist and identify when somebody's pushing us into something that you haven't dealt with. Lord, I thank you right now that you are leading us and that you are guiding us. Lord, that you are so gentle with us. Lord, I pray right now that you are going to make yourself so real. And Lord, that you are going to help us change where we need to change. Help us grow where we need to grow. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for being so gentle with us. Thank you, Lord, for leading us and directing us into freedom. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, we come before you this morning. And Lord, we thank you that we are healed by the power of God. We thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God that dwells inside of us quicken our mortal body. And Lord, we thank you that our bodies are healed by the power of God. Thank you, Lord, that I am healed because the Holy Spirit lives inside of me and because you paid the price in Jesus' mighty name. And we command every single symptom to leave our body right now. And we thank you, Lord, that we walk in divine health in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I want to just commend you this morning. I want to just say thank you for walking with us. I know that God is busy with each one of us. Every one of us are in a process. If you are really honest, every one of us will be able to sit and say, God is dealing with me with this. All right. And we are going to walk this journey together. We are going to stand together. We are going to fight together. We are going to celebrate together as we see the power of God move across our nation. I just want to remind you, one of the most important things that we are doing is praying. All right. Our 6126 prayer sessions, our corporate united prayer sessions across this nation. Six o'clock is our peace.
prayer. 12 o'clock is our protection prayer. 6 p.m. is our peace prayer. I want to encourage you. All right. Make sure that you pray those prayers. It's not long. All right. It's not long. But when we create a culture of prayer across our nation, I'm telling you right now, so many things are going to come into order. So many things are going to happen. When you bring the Prince of Peace into that situation, darkness has to flee. So please, I want to encourage you. Set an alarm on your phones. All right. Set an alarm. I was with somebody the other day because we have alarm set. And it was so uh, interesting to me because our alarm goes off. Their alarm goes off because uh, everybody's taking note. Listen, we need to pray because you can get so busy, so sidetracked that uh, you just don't get to praying on the time or remembering the time. All right. But it's really good that believers are trying to get into the habit. All right. We also trying to get into the habit and into the culture of praying these times because it's really important. It's really important that we pray this. And as we do this, we are creating a covering and a blanket over our nation. Amen. And I want to thank you for being part of this. It is critical. It is very important, saints. All right. Let's pray over our, our businesses and over our economy. Lord, we pray over our economy. We pray for our president this morning. We pray for our leaders. Father, we thank you that you're going to guide them and lead them by your spirit in Jesus' name. We thank you that you've got the king in the palm of your hand and you've got his heart and you're directed in whichever way he needs to go. Lord, I pray right now that as we pray for our leaders, Lord, I thank you that you are moving and that you are going to do something amazing in our nation. Lord, we pray for every sector of our economy. We pray for every business. We pray your blessing over them. We thank you, Lord, that we can build altars. We stand in agreement for every business. Lord, we Christians are establishing the altars. They are restricting the evil work. Lord, I thank you that as we stand in agreement, that the blessing of the Lord will be made manifest across every single sector in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless you today. We thank you, Lord, that you are moving by your spirit. And that you have got a supernatural blessing in store for every single business in Jesus' name. We pray particularly for the hospitality industry. Father, we pray a supernatural intervention in that area in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Lord, we pray for our farmers this morning. Lord, we pray for any farmer that's taking strain. Lord, no matter where they are, whether it be drought or whether it be um, any form of issue, security, or well, Lord, no matter what the issue is. Father, we lift up our farmers today across our nation. We bless them. We release the anointing of God upon them. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon them. And we pray, Lord, that as we stand in agreement, Lord, that you are going to do something supernatural around the farmers and around the agricultural issue in our nation. Father, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your peace. And we thank you, Lord, that you are moving by your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we pray for rain right across our nation. Lord, we declare every bit of drought uh, to come to, um, to an end. And Lord, we pray for rain. And Lord, we thank you for a supernatural rain to rest across our nation in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, we pray for covid and Lord, we command this virus to go in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, right across our nation that the figures die and dissipate in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that every hospital has zero COVID patients in it. We declare life over our nation. We declare health over our nation. And we command this virus to die now and to leave our nation in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that we can declare our nation COVID-free. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that these graphs are not coming down, but they are crashing. They are going to hit zero. In the name of Jesus, we stand in agreement. And we come against any idea or thought or word over a third wave. We bind it, we restrict it, and we release the power of God over our nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I want to thank you. Thank you for standing together. Thank you for standing strong. Thank you for being part of what God has got in store for our nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's do our declaration this morning. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment. 
I have supernatural increase. I have restoration. I have increased assets. I have great victories. I have recognition. I have prominence. I have petitions granted. I have policies and rules changed. I have battles won that I did not have to fight. All because of the blessing and the favor of God on my life.